video we're going to cover some really good classroom management techniques you can use in your classes. Yeah, because after all, your job as an instructor is to be proactive, positive, and to ensure that students are learning, having fun, and under control of the classroom. That's great. So the key to success, I think, is staying organized. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with this, it's really helpful to learn kids' names, um, because then you can really grab their attention easily. Yeah, and as well as that, like we discussed previously, our I cook rules. Just consistently reinforcing those, going over those at the start of the class, and just having them as a reference tool throughout, so kids are aware of what, what's expected in the classroom. Yeah, that's great. And also having a game plan, you know, that's a part of being organized. You know, you have all of your supplies, you know which recipe to start with, you know how to teach kids the lesson plan and the recipe. Yeah. Organized is great, but you know, sometimes it doesn't do the trick. Neat, from your experience as a teacher, how do you deal with difficult situations and difficult students in a class? Yeah, so you're going to, in a classroom, every classroom is different, you're going to get some students after a long day at school that are misbehaving. So the very first thing that I do is make my presence known. So I always rotate around the classroom and often just standing next to a student that's being disruptive or talking, that'll often make them aware yeah. that you're there and oh I shouldn't be talking. Okay. If that doesn't work, um, key thing also is calling out their name to get their attention, make sure they're listening. So I'll be like, Olga, what's the next step in oh, the lesson? I wasn't paying attention. So then I might ask somebody else in the class, Ian, do you know the next step in the recipe? Um, and then I can go back to Olga and make sure she's engaged and back in the lesson. Oh yeah, I heard it now. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third, um, technique that I'll use then, you might have to resort to a one-on-one -on -one and discuss with the student um, what the issue is or what's occurred, but always remember, especially if you're the only adult in the classroom, um, there's going to be a time and a place to discuss one-on-one. -on -one. You don't want to discuss in front of the whole class. So often if um, the whole group is at dicing or using their chopping technique, that's a good time to talk one-on-one -on -one then with the student. And remember, you want to try exhausting all positive techniques before resorting to disciplinary actions. Speaking about positive, um, I think positivity is such a big um, thing to use in a classroom. We want to use positive language with kids, and honestly, outside of a classroom as well. But instead of saying, don't slam the door, you could say, could you close the door nicely? You know, that yeah. really resonates with kids. Definitely. Try to provide positive feedback and enforce a good behavior. For example, if somebody is doing a good job at something, show them your appreciation. If Neve finished chopping her bell pepper and now she's being such a good classmate and helping Ian to finish you know, his job, I'll say, good job, Neve. And this will really motivate other students to do better in class and to get my approval. Yeah, definitely. And from your experience in the classroom, how do you handle those kids with different abilities? Because in our class, we have some kids of different ages, and of course, you know, their abilities, they might have cooked at home before or never seen a knife. Yeah, definitely. So I have three techniques that I like to use. Yeah. So the first one is peer teaching. So you might have a child that has more skill or an older child help a younger child that might oh, need yeah, more assistance. That makes sense. Yeah. And then the second technique I use um, is through my use of questioning. Um, I'll ask different levels of questioning. Oh, I get it. So the older kids might be, you know, might get the questions like, what is protein or exactly. carbohydrates? But for the younger ones, you can do like, what's your favorite pizza topping? Exactly. So just including a variety of uh, different level questions is important. And then lastly, um, I during our us, part of me, you, us, so when I demonstrate, then I have a peer come up and help uh, demonstrate, but then when we're all doing it together, it's an us time. Exactly, that is a perfect opportunity for you, the teacher, to go around the class and either provide extra assistance to some mm -hmm. children, or even provide an extra challenge to someone by showing them a different technique. That sounds great. It's not all great techniques to use in a class, but you know, the majority of the problems happen when the kids are bored, so make sure to keep them engaged. Number one is use everybody in the class because you'll always have a handful of kids who are, you know, super energetic and outgoing. They will be always raising hands to be a volunteer, but you want to make sure that everybody takes turn participating as much as they're comfortable with. And also, the second thing is let the kids do the work. That's right. You know, get them handing out knives or get them handing out plates. Um, just kids love when the teacher gives them jobs, so it makes it easier for you and keeps them engaged and doing something at all times. Yeah, and bring that fun energy to the class. If you're having fun, kids will be having fun, 
and then you'll have less issues to deal with. All of that is great, Olga, but sometimes, you know, you just need a quick game or activity uh, to gain the student's attention. Yeah, that's right. Let's do a quick video on our favorite tips and tricks. Check out the next video. Stay tuned.